So thank you very much for this invitation and I regret not being able to participate uh, in person to this uh, very important uh, conference. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, Churlonis in 1904 enrolled in the newly established Warsaw School of Fine Arts, whose director was Casimir Stabrauskas or Casimir Stabrowski. Stabrowski was only six years older than Churlonis and the two became friends. And in all discussions about the possible influence of theosophy on Churlonis, Stabrowski, who was a theosophist, always plays a crucial role. Indeed, and again I'm uh, repeating things that are well known, during his years at the Warsaw School, Stabrowski organized and Churlonis participated in the so-called wild strawberry tea parties, which were not formal meetings of a theosophical lodge, but included discussions of theosophy, oriental religion, spiritualism, and parapsychology. We can call Stabrowski a theosophical uh, painter, and some of his paintings, such as the Consoler of Monsters, you see on the left, have a visible theosophical flavor. However, some questions remain. What kind of theosophist was Stabrowski, and how did theosophy influence artists who were exposed to them? Answering this question requires some preliminary notions about the theosophical society and its multiple connection with the artistic milieus. The Theosophical Society was founded in New York in 1975 by Russian aristocrat Yelena Petrovna Blavatsky and American lawyer Colonel Henry Steele Olcott. Both of them had a background in spiritualism. In 1878, they moved the headquarters of the society to Ajar in India, but Blavatsky then went to London, where she died in 1891. In 1907, Olcott appointed as president of the society Annie Besant, a former free thinker and feminist, who will later have a crucial role in preparing the independence of India. Besant took as her close associate, Charles Lidbitter, you see in the center, and uh, Besant is on the right, a former Anglican clergyman. And Lidbitter, in turn, recognized in a young Indian, Jiddu Krishnamurti, you see on the left, the future world master. The Theosophical Society experienced several major crises. In 1906, Lidbitter was accused of pedophilia, which led to more than one schism, and this accusation resurfaced periodically until his death in 1934. In 1912-13, Rudolf Steiner founded the Anthroposophical Society, as a theosophical Western schism, rejecting Blavatsky's primacy of Eastern religions over Christianity. In 1929, Krishnamurti publicly renounced his role as world master and continued a career as a spiritual teacher independent from the Theosophical Society. The Theosophical Society survived the schisms, however, and currently still maintain some 24,000 members. Now coming to the arts, only a few specialized academics studied theosophy before 1970. Then, in that year, uh, art historian Sixten Ringbom from Finland published a pioneer study, The Sounding Cosmos, claiming that theosophy had a decisive influence on Kandinsky and the genesis of modern abstract art. 
Alto Ringbom was criticized on several grounds. From then on, scholars started discovering how many leading modern artists had been in touch with the Theosophical Society. In 1983, Linda Henderson published the first edition of her landmark study, The Fourth Dimension and Non-Euclidean Geometry in Modern Art, where she noted how theosophists contributed to explore the idea of a special, rather than Einstein's temporal, fourth dimension, which was crucially influential on modern art. The relationship between the theosophical society and the visual arts past what we may identify as three different stages. I will call them didactic, symbolic, and abstract. Although her comments on symbolic shapes influenced several artists, there is no evidence that Madame Blavatsky <coughs> sorry, was personally interested in avant-garde modern art. She seems to have rather favored didactive art, illustrating through a quite conventional style the tenets of theosophy. German artist Hermann Schmieken is an early example of this style. In 1884, he painted portraits of uh, Blavatsky on the left and of the mysterious uh, masters Kutumi and Moria, right? she claimed to be in contact with. And these were special paintings because uh, uh, Schmieken executed them not only under direction of Blavatsky, but uh, under telepathic control, allegedly, of the masters themselves. Again, didactic art, the first phase, Toward the end of her life, Blavatsky befriended in London the British painter Reginald Marshall. Marshall left a promising career as an academic painter in order to focus on theosophical work, painted in a didactic style, you see on the left the vision of the new day. After Blavatsky's death, he joined the schismatic group of Catherine Tingley and emigrated to her Californian community of Loma Land in San Diego, where he lived for 27 years. And Michael, uh, Marshall's didactic art at this triumph in the path, you see on the right, probably painted in 1895, which became a beloved theosophical icon. Second stage, symbolism. Uh, symbolism uh, as a stage of theosophical art emerged in Belgium around Jean Delville. Delville was part of the circle who first introduced the Theosophical Society into Belgium and its Belgian leader until he had to resign after Krishnamurti, whom he had strongly endorsed, announced he was not the war teacher. The influence of these Belgian symbolists connected with theosophy was felt in France, particularly by the painters known as the Nabi, whose leader, Paul Cerusier, was a member of the Theosophical Society. Paul Gauguin also read Blavatsky's The Secret Doctrine and commented he had been strongly influenced by it. French-speaking symbolism was significantly influenced by French writer and member of the Theosophical Society, Édouard Furet, the author of the influential The Great Initiate, published in 1889. Among those who regarded their encounter with Furet as crucial was poet uh, Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, the Italian founder of Futurism. Several Italian futurists had contacts with the Theosophical Society, including Giacomo Balla, the Ginanni Corradini brothers, meaning Bruno Corra and Armando, Arnaldo Ginna. Ginna was a member of the society, and Umberto Buccioni. Sorry.
Boccioni was among the painters who acknowledged the influence of Besant <coughs> and Lee Beater's book Thought Forms, published in 1905, a typo in some edition erroneously indicated it as first published in 1901, so some art historians made the mistake <coughs> of considering it influential on works before 1905. The book claims that thoughts and the sounds have forms that can be seen by Claire Walliard. Thought forms have been preceded in 1902 by Lit Beater's Men Visible and Invisible, and here we have uh, a Lithuanian uh, connection because the clairvoyant who uh, drew uh, anonymously the illustrations of his book was a Lithuanian diplomat and member of the Theosophical Society. You see here Count uh, Maurice Prajor. We came to the third phase of abstract art, uh, uh, third phase in the development of theosophical influence of the arts, the forms of thought forms were not presented as abstract since they claimed to be faithful representation of emotions and thoughts. Theosophy and the book Thought Forms, however, did act in some instances as a catalyst in the transition from symbolism to abstract art. We can follow this process from symbolism, see the painting above, to abstract art, see the painting below, among artists influenced by theosophy and folk forms in the career of Czech painter Franciszek Kupka, who is the author of both the paintings on the right. Kandinsky explored theosophy for several years and attended the lectures by Steiner when the latter was still a member of the Theosophical Society. Although never his only source of inspiration, Theosophy certainly did play an important role in Kandinsky's approach to abstract art as evidenced and acknowledged by his influential manifesto concerning the spiritual in art society in 1909 and made the transition quite typical of theosophical painters from symbolism to abstract art. You see above uh, an early painting by which is real legal initiation progress and you see below your typical Mondrian. And while some critics denied it, Mondrian insisted to his last days that theosophy was crucial for him and what he produced was in the true sense of the world. Only recently, through several major exhibitions, Swedish artist Ilma Klin has been recognized as an important abstract painter. Afklint was a spiritualist, who literally the spirits, she said, were guiding her hands, but she also studied Blavatsky and became a member of the Theosophical Society, met Steiner in 1908, and followed him when he left the Theosophical Society and found in Anthroposophy. Lauren Harris, the best-known Canadian painter of the gathered around him in the group of seven and other enterprises, artists who were either members or otherwise close to the Theosophical Society, and as you see, also went from figurative to abstract art, and again the painting you see below is a representation of theosophical cosmology. Finally, Nicholas Rerich was the best-known Russian theosophist artist. Both he and his wife Yelena claim they received messages from the same masters Blavatsky has been in contact with. 
Uh, this eventually led to another schism from the Theosophical Society at Mia. So, these artists had different uh, relationship with the Theosophical Society or its splinter groups. Some were influenced by Theosophy and admitted as much in their writings, such as Kandinsky and Gauguin, but did not regard themselves as theosophists, nor did they try to propagate theosophy. Some were somewhat passive members of the Theosophical Society, such as Mondrian, who tried to have his artistic theories endorsed by the Theosophical Society, but failed, and Gina. They did belong to the society, but did not present themselves as theosophists in family. And finally, a third category, the active members of the society who had administrative responsibilities in the Theosophical Society, proselytized for their brand of Theosophy and tried to recruit other artists. And these include Marshall, Delville, Harris, and Rurich. Among those three categories, uh, Stabrowski certainly belonged to the active member, the third category. The problem, however, is that we are much more well informed about what Stabrowski did as a theosophist after 1908, and much less about the years 1904-1905 when he was teaching Chulonis. Stabrowski's Warsaw Theosophical Lodge Alba, named after Russian theosophist Anna Alba Kamiensky, was officially registered as part of the Russian Theosophical Society in 1908. One year earlier, in 1907, Stabrowski had been registered as a member of the society as part of its London branch. From 1910, Stabrowski started a campaign on behalf uh, uh, of recognition uh, by the International Theosophical Society of the Polish branch as autonomous rather than uh, as a member or part of the Russian branch. In 1912, Stabrowski legally incorporated a Warsaw Theosophical Society. However, the Ajar India authorities, uh, I mean the leaders of the Theosophical Society, still refused to recognize an autonomous Polish branch as Poland was part of the Russian Empire. This would happen only in 1923 in independent Poland, thanks to the efforts of Anna Dinosk. It is possible that the lack of success in securing recognition of a Polish branch was one of the factors persuading Stabrowski to leave the Theosophical Society and join Anthroposophy in 1913. So all these events are well documented, but of course all occurred after Churlomi's death. However, there is some evidence that Stabrowski already regarded himself as a Theosophist before receiving his card as a member of the Theosophical Society in 1907. Most scholars of Stabrowski agree that informal theosophical gatherings led by the painter, which will later become the official meetings of the Lodge Alba of the Theosophical Society in 1908, were already taking place in 1905. And they had probably started even earlier, sometimes after Stabrowski in 1902, moved from Krakow to Warsaw just after Marvin sculptor Julia Janiszewska, uh, and you see her portrait by Stabrowski here. Polish scholars Karolina Maria Hess and uh, Malgorzata Alicia Dulska, who have studied in depth Stabrowski's relations with theosophy, have called the attention on the cover of the artist design for the 1904 book uh, Fatum by Hanna Kretmienieska the pen name of Janina Furshirkiewicz, herself a member of the earlier Polish Theosophical Circle. They write that the figure in the image emerging from a dark background is probably a metaphorical representation of face, 
and assign above her face a hexagram composed of white and black triangles is the same as the one used in the official symbol of the Theosophical Society. And for the Polish researcher, this is, of course, important because of the date, 1904. And Carolina Maria S. and her co-author have recently uh, suggested that Stabrowski might have heard of Blavatsky and developed an interest in theosophy much earlier, already in the 19th century, either or both, when he studied in St. Petersburg from 1887 or when he traveled to Middle East in 1892. They also insist that in the late 19th century there was an influential milieu of artists and writers interested in the occult in Poland, as evidenced by the Polish tour of medium Eusapia Palladino in 1893. There were also three Poles who had joined the Theosophical Society abroad, philosopher Vincenti Lutoslavski in 1887, the pioneer of vegetarianism, constantly most Oskragito in 1892, and homeopathic doctor Joseph Piotr Sirevieschi in 1893. And another seven Poles joined the, the lodge in Turin, Italy, uh, where they were residing in 1904 and 1905. According to Vida Majrimiene, while attending Stabrowski's informal theosophical gatherings, Churlionis read Steiner's uh, book Theosophy, which Steiner wrote when he was still a member of the Theosophical Society, and Top Four, which shows that these books were circulating in the worship circle. Coming back to the three kinds of art styles that were influenced by theosophy, deducting symbolism and abstract, Stavrovsky was and remained a symbolist. We cannot find in Stavrovsky's work the full-fledged passage to abstract art on which the book Thought for was influential that we see in the careers of Kupka or Harris. Critics have, however, seen in some of the Polish artists' paintings a shift to abstract imagery that is not complete but moves out of a purely figurative approach. See example on the left. Churlonis went much further and one may wonder what, if anything, Churlonis took from those forms. The question remains, is the fact that Stabrowski, as many other artists, uh, including the luminaries such as Mondrian, was a member of the Theosophical Society, just a curiosity. Or did the Theosophical art, as Mondrian once claimed, exist as something Stabrowski might have in some way passed to Churlonis? One of the most important treatments of this topic is found in the writings of Lauren Harris. Canadian art. He claimed that Blavatsky inaugurated a new aesthetic where art should no longer try to preach a religion or spirituality as some Christian art did, either directly or indirectly, a hetero symbol. A real theosophical art, Harris concluded, should rather induce its audience to experience a, a higher plane of being through beauty. Although this effect may be obtained through different forms of art, Harris claimed that in this stage of human evolution, abstract art would be more effective. In conclusion, American sociologist Howard Baker in his important contribution to the sociology of art, argues that art is a social construction produced by wars of art, where the artist is never alone and the work of art is co-produced by many other agents. 
The theosophical society, through his special interest in art, acts as one such agent and contribute to the creation of one or perhaps more peculiar works of art. Becker's theory may perhaps also be used as a framework to study the non-exclusive place of Stabrowski's theosophy in the creation of the world of art in which Churlon is operating. Thank you. Thank you, Massimo. And uh, I would like to ask uh, if someone has questions. Arturita Klausimo. Then I will have a question for you. Uh, there is a painting um, of Chulonis uh, called uh, Thought. Um, if uh, where is the camera? Um, just uh, uh, <laughs> uh, just a moment. Uh, probably like this. Uh, and this is not the only painting, actually. Uh, I remember another one uh, with the. Uh, like a, like sun shining from the head. Uh, and I wonder, here we have a light from the eyes, and then there is a light from the head and in another painting, and the globe as well in, in, in that one. I wonder if uh, you think uh, there are some commonalities between theosophy, the idea of spreading light, and then and Trelawney's idea of thought, like also spreading light from the eyes and from your from from your mind. This is my question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as you may or some of you may remember, uh, we discussed the last year both in my paper and uh, other papers, uh, the uh, influence uh, uh, of uh, theosophical and other esoteric ideas on uh, several paintings of Chulloni, starting uh, from the early ones when he was a student of uh, uh, Stabrowski. And uh, uh, I believe we concluded that uh, uh, there are sh surely uh, a plethora, many uh, symbols also found in the Western and the Eastern uh, theosophical uh, and other esoteric tradition, uh, clearly uh, including uh, uh, Sufism, and perhaps, uh, and I refer to the previous uh, very interesting speech about Japan, even esoteric uh, Taoism, uh, he could have found in some uh, Japanese uh, uh, artistic works. And uh, as we said last year, <clears throat> the problem, however, is uh, that uh, uh, we don't know exactly uh, where uh, this uh, symbol uh, came from, uh, because uh, uh, throughout the histo history of uh, Esotericism, uh, the symbols may have multiple origins. So, Churlonis could have taken some ideas about uh, lights, or last year we discussed serpents, uh, or uh, he could have taken these ideas from uh, uh, Stabrowski and the Theosophical Society, uh, he could uh, have taken these ideas from uh, uh, Lithuanian uh, spiritual uh, traditions uh, we know he was interested in, he may have taken them from his uh, <coughs> multiple uh, 
reading of different authors, but certainly a commonality there is uh, between uh, uh, Ciurloni's works uh, and uh, uh, ideas about uh, metaphysical or spiritual realms, uh, mysterious beings, uh, and the power of light uh, uh, found both in the Western and the Eastern uh, esoteric tradition. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you for joining us.